We started having church with worship and page, and he's not going to stop us. I, I love the, the, the bulletin, and uh, revive us, and we will call on your name. Well, I'm going to turn it around, and we will call upon your name. Will you revive us, Lord? And so it, it's an honor for Karen and I to be back at First Baptist Penn Memorial. We are honored to be back with Wes and Diane. Thank you for the invitation. to. It's like coming back home. And so thank you for that invitation, and uh, good to have Billy. I call him Billy Jack and, uh, and, and Rhonda with us. They, they travel with us as much as they're a- able to, and so we are excited to have them with us. I, I call him Billy Jack. Actually, uh, we went to the same junior high together, and uh, I, I was a, a few years ahead of him. I know I don't look older than he does, but I'm, you know, I, I you know, I, but, uh, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's what it is, and, uh, but, uh, I guess I started the trouble there, and he kind of finished it when he came along. But uh, it, it's an honor to, to be with you. Now, we, we, we've got, God has put some, some word on my spirit for this week. So I, I'm, I'm glad, glad, that you're, that, glad that you're here because uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time in the introduction because I've, I've, I've got five services to be with you. And, and as I was preparing for this, and I began preparing a couple of months ago and asking the Lord, even though we've been other places and, you know, minister about four times a week, we, we still know what's ahead and ask God to give us, give us a, 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 a theme, an idea. And Wes had talked about reviving. And, and what the Lord had spoken to my spirit was, was that if we are going to accomplish the will of God within our lives, we, we've got to learn the foundations that God wants to establish within our lives and stand strong upon those foundations. Are you with me so far? And so we, we, this, this is our theme that, he, that he's given me. The, 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 the problem that, that I got, not, not y'all but me, is realizing there's five services that when I begin to study this and begin to prepare on this, I ended up with seven messages. And, uh, and, 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 and then the, the, the initial thought of that was, was that Sunday morning I was going to establish a foundation. And so that really gave me eight. But to give you the seven, seven services was, the first one was going to be, probably be tonight, what God says reflects who God is. I, w- I want you to hear these. Who God is determines what he thinks of you. Let me say that again. Who God is determines what he thinks of you, not what you think of yourself. And, and I'll, I'll get in onto that probably about tomorrow night. Number three was what God thinks of you is more important than what you think of yourself. And that's to add to the second one. And, and the fourth one was when God shows you the error of your way. Now, that happens every now and then. Nobody in here has an error of the way, right? Amen. And, but when God shows you the error of your way, don't hesitate, repent, because God is about to show you and take you into a new season of your life if you'll repent. The fifth part was what you focus upon will always determine the steps of your destiny. The sixth part was what you do is more important than what you say. Think about that. In other words, there's a time to shut up and walk it out. I don't leave here this morning and said that preacher told me to shut up. I'm, I'm just saying that's, that's, that's number six. Number seven would be what, what we say and do reflects who we really are. And so now, undoubtedly, that's, that's seven services, and we only have five. So I've asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, you know, you know the importance of this time and this, this meeting that, that we are having, and you will arrange what needs to be arranged in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're thankful. For, uh, I, I, I tell you what, we are parked at a beautiful RV space, and, 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 and my spirit, I, I'm good to Thanksgiving, or the week before Thanksgiving. I'll be truthful with you. And, and uh, I, I looked out, and uh, we, we got some woods right out in front of, her, front of us, and then it falls off in there. And, and, and I pulled up, as I said, man, we got a holler right in front of us. My wife looks at me and says, what do you mean holler? And I said, that's what they call it in Arkansas. Isn't that right? They call it a holler. Amen. And, and, and so, I, I, you know, I, I watch Mountain Men. I watch Mountain Men on TV. I, I know what it's called. And, and so uh, we got a big holler out there in front of us. And uh, I was talking to a good friend on the telephone yesterday and said, I was going to insp- explore down in the holler. He said, oh, my gosh, please don't do this. Because every now and then I'm prone to 
fall down and, you know, I always get back up. But he says, if you do, have Karen tie a rope around you and, and, and help you get down into there. So he understands that he's known me for a long time and that he was going to try to be here. Well, let me begin this morning. And I want to just set a foundation, share it with you where the Lord has led me. But I want to set a foundation with you this morning. In other words, if we are going to accomplish God's, God's will for our life, that's the key accomplishing God's will for our life. As a matter of fact, and you can read this later, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, if you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, you've got to be, you've got to be walking in the will of God. Read that later, Matthew 7, 21. And so, uh, now go with me to get it this morning to Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to begin there, then we're going to, we're going to begin turning uh, uh, back with you to some other scripture. Hebrews chapter 6 with me this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Honored to be here. I, I, I feel blessed this morning. I mean, I'm blessed whether or not I feel like it or not, but I feel blessed this morning. I slept good last night. And uh, I, I realized the time this morning, let, 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 me, let me say this, the only time I'll have a realization of the time is Sunday morning be, because I know you want to go to lunch. But tonight we'll be back here at 630 Take you a nap this afternoon. Bring your Bible tonight because we'll probably go a little bit longer tonight than we'll go this morning. But I want, but I want to set a foundation this morning before we enter these steps with you this morning because, because the, the, the foundation is important of where the Holy Spirit is leading us. Matthew, cha excuse me, Hebrews chapter 6. Go there with me in, in, in verse number 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 1. There, therefore... Uh, Anytime you see the word therefore in Scripture, you understand that he's adding to what he has just said. If you go back to two or three verses that what he just spoke of out of chapter 5, he's talking about spirit, spiritual immaturity, uh, that he wanted, he wanted the children, uh, the, 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 the Hebrew children, understand that, uh, that they, need not, they need not walk in the milk of the word, that they need to now be skilled in the things of God. In other words, we need to mature in the things of God. And so when you enter into chapter 6, he says, Therefore, leaving the discussions of the elementary principles of Christ, that once a person gets born again, he or she must walk in the elementary principles of Christ. Somebody say amen to that. Because there's a, there's a beginning walk. I led someone to Jesus not long ago. And, and, and I know that many of them you can say, uh, start in book of John, and that's a good place to start. But I really like to take them, if I'm going to disciple them, I like to take them into the book of Ephesians because it tells you where you start and, and who you were, but it also then begins to tell you where you need to go. But it, it, it's good to, as long as they start somewhere to begin to learn about the things of Christ. But now the apostle in the book of Hebrews says, leaving the discussions of the elementary principles of Christ. In other words, he's saying, we, it's, it's time to move on. Everybody said out loud with me, it's time to move on. That if you're going to get into the will of God for your life, if you're going to understand the will of God for your life and for the life of his church right here, it, it's time to move on. It's time to gain the altitude and it, it's time to begin again to walk in a process that God has for your life or the will of God. Jeremiah 29, 11, to get brought up later in the week, but you begin to understand that God has plans for you. They're good plans and the goodness of God that wants to operate within your life. The Bible says that the, 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 the goodness of God is so special that he says that your steps are ordered by the Lord. Every step that you take if you're in the will of God has been ordered by the Lord. So you need to understand that as you're in the will of God, you need to know the next step that you need to walk in. The time of walking in the arena of life that, that, I, that, that I walk in, you know, the, 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 the eras of my life needs to be over with. Too many of us have walked in too many eras within our life, and it's time we walk in the truth, knowing that I'm in the will of God. Somebody needs to say amen to that. So we understand that he said, let, it, let us go on unto perfection, or let us go in, on, the word perfection means let us go into maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. You understand that that's the first position, elementary position that every child needs, needs to understand in verse 1 is that you've got got to repent of being lost and you've got to begin to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
You, you got to repent. Now, now he, he's not saying go off and leave it because every time, every time you walk in, in disorder within your life and you go against the will of God, you've got to be willing to repent. A person that's not willing to repent will never walk in the will of God within their life. And God has given us a way of escape. If we are faithful and just to ask for forgiveness in 1 John, he is faithful and just to forgive us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says of the doctrine of baptism. Well, I, I don't have time this morning to talk about the doctrine of baptism, but you understand that you walk, you, you, you're baptized, the laying on of hands of, of, of the resurrection of the dead uh, and of eternal judgments. Now, these things are basic principles that needs to be taught in the church of the living God to the new child of God that is born again and saved, needs to be a new disciple in Christ and need to understand this thing. Now, verse 3 says, and this, this we will of God if God permits. For it is impossible for those who once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again of repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and to put him to an open shame. Here's what he's saying now. And, and, and the reason that these elementary principles of the doctrine in the beginning of the book of Hebrews chapter 6, uh, chapters one, uh, verse 1 through 2 and 3, we, we, when you're taught those elementary principles of doctrine, it will keep you grounded, steadfast in where you are with Christ, and you'll not fall away. The reason you see many people fall away is they've not been taught in the elementary principles of the doctrines of Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. And so it says, now, for, for, for if they fall away to renew, renew them again uh, unto repentance. For the earth which drinks and the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessings from God. But it, if it bears thorns, now he, he, he's given us an illustration here in, in verse number 7 of what happens to us because we receive the, the person of the Holy Spirit. We receive the living water of what's happened. He gives us an earthly uh, idea, earthly representation of what happens to us spiritually. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon him and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessings from God. Everybody say blessings from God. And what he's saying here is, is that when you're open to receive the rain, the spiritual rain from heaven, and you're walking in the spiritual rain from heaven, already taught the principles of God, then you begin to walk into the blessings of God. How many, how many this morning want to walk in the blessings of God? See, God, God never intended for you to fall away from him. He always intended you to grow up in him. Amen. And so if we're growing up in him, if we're receiving that rain from heaven, from the kingdom of God, that spiritual rain, that living water, the Bible says that we will receive the blessing from God. But if it, if it bears storms and briars, verse 8, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. In other words, you're either going to be walking in the blessing or you're going to be walking in the cursing. Come on. I, I, I'm, come on, I, I can slow down if you feel like I'm going too fast. You understand you're either walking in the blessing or you're walking in cursing. I can take you back over to Abram, Abraham, that when God blessed Abraham, he walked in the blessings. When, when Abram told the lies that he told, he walked in the cursing. And all through life, you understand that when you're walking under the will of God, you're walking under the reign of God, you're steadfast in the principles of God that you've been taught by the word of God, not handed down by the tradition of men, but given unto you from the kingdom of God through the power of the Holy Spirit that seals you unto the day of redemption. God blesses your life even when it rains on the just and the unjust, and it does, but even in the midst of that, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Even when you're walking through the valley, there's still a blessing of God that is found there in the valley if you've got eyes to see and ears to hear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to hear this 
this morning what, what God put upon my spirit. So, so, so we understand in verse 9, but beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. I don't know if you under, underline anything within your Bible, but you need to underline it. If you don't underline it with a pencil or pen, underline it within, within your spirit. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. And what the Apostle Paul, who I believe is the author of this book, but yet we know it's the Holy Ghost anyway, that what he's saying unto them, come on, there's something better that's going to happen. I love to hear this. My God, I could get excited about this. There's something better for your life that's about to come. If you'll stay under the influence of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom is the Word through the power of the Holy Spirit, there's something better that's yet to come in the name of Jesus. I, I understand that we all physically age. Come on, I'm older now than I was when I was here last time. I understand, but my spirit is getting younger in the name of Jesus. So there's some better things that's yet to come to me, to care, better things that are yet to come to you if you are willing to let the rain from heaven fall upon you, the living water come upon you in, in the name of Jesus. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Look what he says in verse 9. So I don't know if you've ever read this verse before, but I circle this thing. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. So it's more than just being saved. It's the better life, the kingdom life that God has for you right now up on the face of this earth. Don't misunderstand me. Thank you, God, that I'm saved. Thank you, God, that I know that I'm going to spend eternal life with you. But yet, there's some better things that are to come because I'm in the salvation of the Most High, His righteousness that lives within me now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor, verse 10, of love which you have shown toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to full assurance of hope until the, what? Come on, we're in this till the end. And then you got a new beginning. Hallelujah. That you, come on, that you, verse 12, that you do not become sluggish. Everybody with me? Come on, that you do not, come on, there's some rain from heaven ready to rain within your spirit today. Ready right now in the name of Jesus. And it don't have to come out of this preacher's mouth this morning because it's coming out of the kingdom of God. There's some betterment yet God has for you in the name of Jesus. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what is going on. But you, you could be on the mountaintop experience now, but there's still another mountaintop ready for you to get up for in the name of Jesus. You could be in a valley now, and God's trying to take you through. Come on, quit praying for God to get you out of that valley, but ask God to show up in that valley because there's some better things in that valley he, he wants you to experience. But the problem that we're finding in the New Testament church, that many people become sluggish and what that means is they just give up and accept things for the way they come. But imitate those, but imitate, rest of verse 12, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. My, another verse I need you to, need you to circle. Come on. Come on, God's got some better things for me. Say it out loud. God's got some better things for me. Come on, better things for me. See, it's not about your age this morning. Come on, it, it, it's, it's not about your, your, where you are in society, but it's where you are in the kingdom of God. God's got some better things for you this morning. But the one thing that he's asking you is don't become sluggish. Don't become settled for where you are because the person that becomes settled are just fixing where they are. God can't advance you because you refuse to hear what the Lord through the Holy Spirit has to say into you in the name of Jesus. So he says, I, I want you now to, to imitate those, the, the, the believers that Paul is saying that is around those, that they, they have gained the promises of God. But they gain the promises of God through faith and they gain the promises of God through patience in, in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We, we've got to understand that there's a foundation and in that foundation we've got to set our position in Christ that we're, we're going to be faithful. I'm going to be patient because I realize I've got some better things for me and, and I'm going to open myself up to receive the rain from heaven because God's about to establish some some better foundations within my life so that I can, I can lay aside every weight 
that seems to hold me back and so that I can be free and have my being in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ because I'm going this way for some better things that God has for me and for my wife and for my children and for my grandchildren in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, turn with me, turn with me if you would. Let's, let, let me go back with you. Uh, uh, <laughs> go with me to, to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Just just need to just need to just continue to set this foundation and that's just maybe where we're going to get this morning. In Luke, in Luke chapter 5, you're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ is calling what I believe here is four fishermen call, calling, to be, calling to, be, to be disciples. And I, I'm asking God to put our spirits in, 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 in receivership to receive what he's put upon this preacher's spirit these next few services. Now, in Luke chapter 5 and verse number 1, it says, So, so it was as the multitude pressed about him. Pressed about who? To the Lord Jesus Christ. They wanted to hear what? The word of God. Are you with me? They wanted to hear the, the word of God. That he stood by, by the lake of Gennesaret, and, and there he was. He was teaching. And in verse 2, he says, And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from, from them, and they were washing their nets. Then he, then he, got, in, then he got into one of the boats, which was, was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down, and he taught the multitudes from the boat. Well, there, there's a word here that the Lord has, has, has given unto me, and, and, and for us to, for these foundations to be set that we've got to understand. Your, your ability and my ability has nothing to do with what God is, is wanting to do. Hear, hear what I got to say this morning. Your ability and my ability has nothing to do with what God wants to be done in the name of Jesus. These were fishermen. They knew the exact time of the day to fish. They knew how to handle their nets. But when Jesus stepped upon the scene of their life, he was about to take them to another level. Everybody say another level. This is what the Apostle Paul is talking about. This is what the Apostle Paul is talking about in, in, in Hebrews chapter 6, going to another level. So you, you understand that the teaching that he had for them is, is setting a relevance here that, that they needed to understand so they could walk in the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he wanted them to understand that, that you're, what you knew what you have known all of your life, the ability that you have to be fishermen, I'm asking you to do something else now that you've never done before. Now, that's, that, that, that's, come on, that's hard to do when you go into a church. I'll, I'll be truthful. It's hard to do. Now, how many of us in here are set in our ways? Three of us are raising my hand. The rest of us are probably lying. Amen. But, but, but there, there's a few of us set in our ways. And, and, and we get set in our ways, but do you understand that for God to manifest himself in a new dimension within your life, you got to come out of yourself to get into him. Amen. 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 You got to come out of yourself. So, so I want you to see, first of all, in verse 2 and 3, that, that their ability from, come on, he was about to use them to change the world. But he had, to, he had to change them on the inside before they could change anything on the outside. Now, you're looking to a man that I love to talk to people about Jesus. But I always, before, I, before I'm, I approach somebody about Jesus, God, I want you to use me, but do something within me that I'll be able to present you like I ought to be presented to that individual that I'm about to talk to. Happened on the way here. I, I, I love coming through the Choctaw Reservation. love talking to the Indians. Talk to a few of them on the way here. Stop at other places, minister to the sun. But I'm finding out more and more that God has to deal with me in here before I I can speak him out and change me in here before I can be used by him in somebody else's life. You'll get that tomorrow maybe, but I pray you understand what I'm saying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now uh, I, I would say in verse 4, because, because if, you're, if you're willing, 
and your understanding that, that your ability has nothing to do with it, then in verse 4, I would ask you, are you willing to leave the norm of your life to step in to the supernatural of where God wants you to be? Because in verse 4, he said, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Are you with me? Come on, this wasn't the norm. I studied this. I looked at the times when they went fishing. They knew the exact times. Whether you, you know, we always look at the high, down, on, down in the coast, the high tide and the low tide. I understand all of that. Well, you get a fishing report every morning on the radio or the TV. It tells you what time to fish and when not to fish. and gives you all that information because they go by experience. They go by the moon. They go by the sun. And all of that makes something if you're going out physical fishing. These men knew the time to fish. But here's where Jesus is carrying them. Jesus is carrying them is you've got to understand that I'm about to take you to another level but I've got to get you out of what you used to know so you can get into what I want you to know because I'm about to do something with you. I'm not, to ma- I'm not going to make you fishers of fish anymore. I'm about to make you fishers of man. Now you understand today that all of us in here today, you've got a husband, you've got a wife, you've got children, you've got grandchildren, you've got sons, you've got daughters, you've got friends. There's some people in your life that need to know the Lord Jesus Christ today and you and I might be the only voice that can speak to them for that change to take place. But if I am set in my ways, if I'm not to be, if I'm not willing to be supernaturally changed by the Holy Spirit of God, then all they're going to see is somebody whom I used to be, and they're not going to see whom God is wanting me to be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so he tells them what he says. He says, launch out into the deep and let your nets out. Wow. Wow. Now, in my own, in my own uh, mind here, uh, I, I begin to look at this and say, wow, change is coming. Change is coming. Can you just say that out loud with me? Change is coming. Something, see, I've already told you, God, God's, God's about to bless your life. But he's going to do it his way, his timing, in his season, he's going to bless your life. But now you've got to get in, you've got to get, see, you've got, you've got to get into his position of where he wants you. Quit trying to bring him into, and, and to change into your position of how you are, but you've got to get into his position for him to change you from where you are into where he wants you to be. That's difficult. I, I, man, I'm, very, I'm agreeing with what the Lord's saying, but, but it's a tougher battle. Well, some of us, because I know me, you know you, you know. And so, but yet, but yet, God wants to bless you. Take a big, deep breath. You're still here, so it can still happen by faith. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, by faith and by patience. Thank God he's got patience for me. Amen. He's not giving up on you. Not going to give up on you. Then look, look with me. Look on, with me on uh, in, in, in verse number five. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, look here. Nevertheless, everybody say nevertheless. <laughs> At your word, I'm going to let it down. I'm going to let that net down. Capital Y. At your word. Come on. Are you with me? Man, God, I've, to, I've, told, I've told all day and I've told all night. I've, I've, I, come on, I did, I did everything that I know how to do. Come on, I've controlled everything my whole life. I know exactly what, I, come on, I, I can name it from A to Z. But now I hear what you're saying. We understand that as you look at the scripture, that when Simon had heard this, It had to be confusing to him a little bit. He didn't understand everything, but he had one thing that he needed to understand. And he made this statement, at your word. That's why when the Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word is God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here's what I've come to tell you today. I'm going to lay these foundations out before the week is out. But you understand, it's at his word 
that we settle ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And it's not my word, but it's his word. You, that's, that's the reason you'll see this man always open this book because it's at his word. I don't want anything to come out of me unless it comes out of this book under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I, I, my God is real. My God is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But it will always be at his word. I believe in the prophets. I, I, I I believe in the fivefold ministry. I believe in the prophetic message. But every prophetic message given out of the prophet must be at the word of God in the name of Jesus. Must be at the word of God. We cannot just keep grabbing stuff out of the air like this. It must be at your word. That's what he said in verse. That's what he said in verse five. At your word, I'm going to do. I'm going to do what you're saying. Praise God. At your word. Hear me, brother Wes. At your word. Come on, come on. See, there's sometimes, now I, I, don't want the, I don't want this to, to, to offend anybody because I know you got to have them and all that. But you know, sometimes, you, no, let me just say all the time, you don't need somebody to agree with you. You just need to be in his word. Sometimes we just don't need to gather a board meeting. We need the God's word to speak unto us. Are, are, are you with me? There's nothing wrong in having a board. There's nothing wrong in a board praying and seeking God. But, but don't leave that, room unless you, leave that room unless you hear the word of God. It's at his word that changes are made. It's at his word that blessings are going to come. He's not, just going, to, he's not going through here this morning and, well, I'm going to bless him, not you. You I'm going to bless, not you. You I'm going to bless, not you. No, God wants to, he loves us all. He wants to bless us all. And it's done through faith in him, and it's, and it's done through faith in him, and it's done through patience, but it's always done at his word in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that Simon said, uh, at your word, Lord, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going to let it down. Now, any time the word of God is spoken, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So anytime the word is spoken, our part is to begin to activate, activate faith into what the word is spoken. Again, always be sure it's the word that is spoken, but when the word is spoken, then my part is to activate faith. <clears throat> now what I'm finding is this, and I've been in this 40 years, but I just feel like I'm getting started. What I'm finding is that every time God gives me a fresh word, every time that word comes, then what he's requiring of me is to activate my faith into that word. Mm, I want you to catch that before Wednesday. Because every time God, see, why should God give you one more word if you're not activating the word he gave you yesterday? I didn't hear Simon say, tomorrow God, tomorrow God, when we go fishing at our regular time, we'll, we'll do it. Didn't hear him say that. But what I heard him say was, at your word, God, we're going to do it right now. Activating the word of God. And so it's, it's not your season, but it's his season in you and through you. Are, are you with me? At your word. It's not the amount that, who, come on, it used to be years ago in the ministry, man, if, if, if I get people to agree with me in the word that I heard, man, I, I felt good, man, I, I must be right. No, because sometimes you're going to find that when God speaks a word unto you, you're not going to find anybody around you that's going to agree with that word. And, and, and you're not supposed to find people to agree with you. You're supposed to be walking in the word and agreeing with the word and you activate the word because of what the Holy Spirit has spoken into you in the name of Jesus. Are you with me this morning? See, the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to a place of, of me getting a foundation established here before I can, I can leave some thoughts with you that he put, up, he put up on my heart to leave with you in the name of Jesus. Faith will always. Now, this, now this, is what, this is what had to happen in his life and had to happen in your life. The opposite of faith is fear. Fear brings torment. Fear brings rebellion. How do you know? I've been there. And you've probably been there. So you understand that, 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 that Simon was either going to rebel against the word and not have any faith, 
and they had not caught fish that day, fish the next day, or not caught any more fish at all. But he had to, he had to walk in faith, and the moment that he walked in faith, fear left him in the name of Jesus. The opposite of fear is faith. When you worried about how much, when you worried about, come on, when you worried about your pocketbook that if I give somebody or give the church or give a ministry this amount of money, how are we going to make it? That's fear. If God's told you to do something, do it. Come on, it's getting a little weak on the amens. But you see, God's trying to get every one of us to a level to where the supernatural blessings can begin to flow within our life. I'm tired of living off of the expectation of knowing what Bill can do and even giving God credit sometimes for what Bill knows he can do. Mm, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, look, look with me a little bit further in that chapter. And, and when he had done this, What did they do? They took God at his word. Took Jesus at their word. Amen. Everybody with me? And when they had done this, they didn't catch any fish. No. Uh -uh. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. It was so many that their net was what? Their net was breaking. If I leave nothing else with you this morning that you would understand at the word of God, Heavens will shake to grace you and to favor you in the name of Jesus. If you will appropriate, if you'll walk in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, heaven will favor you like you've never been favored before in the name of Jesus. Quit giving excuses. Quit walking in your own way. Quit even walking in your religious experiences of yesterday, though some of them might have been good. Come on. Do you know what it is to live off past relationship anybody if you're married today and you're and, and you're trying to exist off of a past relationship with your spouse you're in trouble it's got to be fresh and new every day and so it is with the Lord Jesus Christ and and he got a he he brought a bunch of fishermen to a realm that they knew to change them to show them that he was the supernatural favor of God brought forth on this earth to proclaim the word of God. And if you will believe the word of God, miracles will happen in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says <laughs> they caught, they, that their net was breaking. So, so they, they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Man, isn't that something? Isn't that something? Man, man I, got, I got too much. I need help. <laughs> and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And, but when Simon Peter saw it, look what, look what he did. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at, at, the, at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now, now, now what is he saying? He's saying in reality, I knew what was in my heart. I knew what was, I knew what I know the, I knew the real person that I was. Come on. Have you ever tried to hide the real person? Yeah, we all have. But he's come to reality because he for, for just a little bit he took God at his word. And, and he saw the beauty and the majesty of God's word. He saw the power of the word. He saw the blessings of God within his life. And then he backed, and it was just like Isaiah walking on, coming home from the funeral that day of King Uzziah. Coming home from that funeral that day of King Uzziah and Isaiah was touched because he had just gone to a good friend's funeral even though they had parted company years back because Uzziah left the, the blessings of God and the, he became disobedient. But Isaiah went to his funeral and on the way home, Isaiah met up with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when the Lord asked him, Who, who's going to go? And Isaiah said, I'm going to go. But he had to have his lips touched. He had to have his thinking changed. And Isaiah became one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament that, that, that gave us more descriptive pictures of the coming of the Messiah than any other book of the Old Testament. Why? Because he had a meeting 
with heaven above of whom God really was and when you meet with God of whom you really are, it brings you to your knees. God, I need a change within me and I need help from above. I know that your word works. I just saw that you, come on, every one of us in here this morning, we've seen God's word work. We've seen it work in other people's lives. We've seen it work at times in our lives. And and sometimes, if not all the time, we've got to get back to the altar of worship and bow before God. For God, forgive me. For though I've seen your word work at this time in my life, God, my heart wasn't turned completely over to you. And I repent, God. I repent, God, of who I've been because I'm selling out to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, (laughs) verse 8, he says, I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished as as the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, look what he said to him. When you go to the altar and you got it right with Jesus, the first thing he'll take away from you is fear. First thing. Why? Because the Bible says in 1 John that perfect love casts out all fear. (laughs) Well, who did he meet? The perfect love. Who did he meet in believing the word? The perfect love. The perfect love cast out all fear. And see, this is is the problem with some of us. This is why there's some of you in here today that that fear fear dominates your life. You, You move from one fear to the next. If you're not worried about yourself, you're worried about your husband or your wife or your children or your grandchildren. Come on. If, if God has you and he does and, and you've given them to him, don't you think he's got them? But as long as you stay in fear, you'll never understand the perfect love. But when you understand the perfect love, the first thing that Jesus wanted to do, Simon Peter, don't be afraid. And I leave that with you this morning. God is about to bless you. Take take this as a prophetic word this morning. God's about to bless you above and beyond measure. But the first thing you're going to have to come to a realization with, don't be afraid at what God's called you to do. Don't be afraid at what God's called you to do. If he's called you, he'll get you there. He'll do it. He'll take care of you. And scripture after scripture, I could give you over all that, but I want you to understand that in the foundation that God's planting within my spirit for your life, you can't receive what I'm about to start giving you tonight until you let fear get out of your life in the name of Jesus. It'll never happen. None of us knows what tomorrow's going to bring, but I know who's in tomorrow. You say, well, what happens if something happens to you? Well, man, I'm going to glory. Amen. Amen. The best. The best awaiteth me. So I can't get no phone calls going to put me in fear. Hey, I'm going to get no phone call put me in fear. Well, what happens if your rig breaks down? You can't leave here, Eureka Springs. Well, you got me for a while then. Amen. Perfect love casts us out all fear. I'm, I'm, I See, and, and you worry about the initial things. And God can't get the big things through to you because you're worried about the initial things. Well, what somebody said. If it's real, ask God to forgive you and ask Him to forgive you. If it's not real, let it go. Just don't worry about it. I know words hurt. I understand that. But in what God's called, God's called... His blessings are bigger than any word somebody can say to you. So if you let those words penetrate you and you don't forgive them, then you can't receive the blessing that God has for you in the name of Jesus. And so he, said, he, says, he says unto Peter, don't be afraid. Huh. Because I'm about to change you, boy. Something's fixing to happen. And look what he tells him. From now on, you're going to catch men. Now, oh, I got to hurry. From, from now on, I said 20 minutes this morning. That was going to be it. But it's, it's from, from now on, if he'd have told Peter this at the beginning, 
he'd have lost him. He had to carry him through step by step by step. From now on, Peter, what you used to do, you're not going to do anymore. As a matter of fact, as you study the scripture, they tried to do it one more time and they flopped at it. From now on, Peter, you're going to catch men. Wow. Really? Wow. But wait a minute. Perfect love had already come. So I'm telling you, from the beginning of this chapter, where fear was, to right now, fear was gone. Amen. I'll catch them, Lord. Come, amen. I'm ready. I saw, you, I, I saw your word work in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and come on, catch with me. Verse 11, because this, this is where I was headed about 20 minutes ago. Verse 11. So when they had brought their boats to land. So when they brought what they used to know how to take care of. That which they used to do when they brought it to land. Now, there was nothing wrong in what they used to do, but now it wasn't what God wanted them to do. Pay attention. In other words, if you're into something that you used to do and you know God's called you out of what you used to do, you better better not stick around where you're not supposed to be. You better not keep doing what you're not supposed to do. See, I'm beginning to learn a little bit about the anointing. A little bit. That... God will anoint you to do what you're called to do, but if you go over to do what you're not supposed to do, there's no anointing. You can have all of the religion words right. You know how to pray right. You know how to dress right. But if you're over here and into your own calling, there's no anointing. And let me just bring it down to reality where the rubber meets the road. In that reality, you understand, you know it down deep. But if, 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 by the way, perfect love has, has got a hold of you and God's called you, then you know you're right where you're supposed to be. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. If you're going to accomplish the will of God within your life, you're going to have to understand what I read to you out of Hebrews. Faith and patience. You've got to leave those elementary teachings. It doesn't mean that they're not inclusive within your life, but you've got to be willing to advance in the kingdom. If you're going to understand the will of God within your life, then you're going to have to relate to where, where Simon was. And get to that place of taking a stand upon the Word of God. I stand upon this unashamedly, knowing that my God is this Word was as powerful 2,000 years ago, it's just as powerful today, and it'll be as just as powerful tomorrow. I'm amazed at how churches and how people want to try to change this Word to fit their own needs. And you better pay attention to what the Word says and follow the Word. I was talking to Billy about something, and maybe you saw it on Facebook the other day. And, and, and this will probably get me in trouble, but let me go ahead and say it. We have been worried about more building the stages out to entertain than we have going back with the stages to make more room for the altar. The Word of God will always bring you to the altar of your life to get it right with the Lord Jesus Christ and where you are. Because God favors and blesses His children that understand the perfect love that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. You receive His word this morning? Amen. Probably didn't go the way I had planned, but I believe it went the way the Holy Spirit wanted it to go. Stand to your feet very quietly, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. And we have chosen to rejoice in Him this day. This is His day, this is His hour, this is His season. I don't believe 
in accident. I don't believe that I just showed up here this morning because we planned it. I know that God planned this under his sovereign will. And I know that he placed you exactly where you were supposed to be this morning to hear what the Spirit had to say. Whether it came out of this preacher's mouth or whether it came directly from heaven and I pray that it all did it that came out of my mouth. But he placed you in the right place and the right season of your life to hear what the Spirit has to say in the name of Jesus. Now, there's some fundamental issues that we've got to begin talking about. We've got to begin looking into. But we can't get into those until you, you are first willing to come to the altar of your life this morning and say, Lord, I believe in your word. And what your word says, I'm going to stand upon it. I'm not looking for agreement of men. I'm going to agree with your word. And, and if that's you this morning, let's begin, let's begin this revival off right. If that's you this morning and you're ready to agree with the word of God, come on down to the altar with me right now. Just come on down. Step out and come into the altar with me this morning. You're ready to agree with the word of God right now. Come on. Come on. See, you may be a long time since you stepped out to the altar, but just step out to the altar this morning. I'm ready to agree with the word of God this morning and what the word of God has to say this morning. Come on, he'll be the first to just step on out to the altar. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, God, God's, God's trying to bless you. And in blessing you, there's some changes that need to take place. Within me, within you, within what he's wanting to do in your life, your family life, your church life, your daily walk life, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we gather around here this morning, just, just make a declaration unto the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I'm ready to stand upon your word. I'm ready to, to move out of my ways that I've been set in and agreeing that we've all been set in our, in our ways over the years. I'm ready to move out in the refreshment. I'm ready to begin to believe that all things are possible in Christ Jesus. I'm ready by faith today and patience today according to the book of Hebrews. I know that, that you want to favor me and my home and my children and grandchildren. I know that today. And, but I also know, God, that where is it going to start? It's going to start down deep within me today. <laughs> right where you are right now and as you're praying right now, you heed the voice of the Holy Spirit right now. Come on. He knows if you're, he knows if you're in the call of God or you're out of the will of God right now. And if you're out of the will of God right now, you just ask him to forgive you. You don't have to come before any other man unless the Holy Spirit leads you. You just come before Jesus right now. You ask him to forgive you right now in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that since you're faithful to ask, he's faithful to forgive. And you be willing and you say unto him that I'm going to step over into your call. Come on, there'll be those around you that disagree, but you know what? If God be for you, who can be against you? And right now, every one of us needs God to be for us. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, under the unction of the Holy Spirit right now, I want to be like Peter. I want to be willing to leave my old life, spiritually speaking, and step into that new life that God has called for me in, in the name of Jesus. I want to follow you. I want to follow you, Lord Jesus, all the way. There's no turning back. I had a dear pastor friend that's done God on to heaven that he said these words that he's done gone too far to turn back now in following Jesus. I want to follow you this morning, Lord Jesus, all the way because there is no other way. I want to follow you this morning. So God, as we're praying here this morning, I ask you to touch every person right now in the name of Yeshua right now. The mighty hand of favor of God will begin to be ministered unto them in Jesus' name. And they would receive that perfect love that you have for their lives right now. There's no ifs and buts or about it. 
Remove all that out of your vocabulary this morning. It's not if this happens. It's already happened at the cross. It's not but, well, somebody else changes. No, it's not about them changing. It's about you changing. It's, about, it's between you and God right now. No more excuses. It's time now to move out in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. To all the praise we give unto Him. All glory, all glory we give unto Him. We thank Him this morning. If you happen to be here this morning and you need someone to pray with you, I'm right here. Pastor Wes is right here. We'd be honored to pray with you. But the key right now is that you're getting along with the Lord Jesus Christ. God's getting us out of that old man. Bringing us into that new man. It's tough. Old flesh don't like it. But it's time now that we let the Spirit of the living God lead us in the name of Jesus. You see, we, we pray God revive us. And I'd have to say that sometimes we look out and say God revive them. But that's not the theme. The theme is God revive me. God revive me. And in praying that this morning, <laughs> he has done it. Because you've prayed it. Now it's time to, to move ahead. Come on, just say it in your spirit. I'm going to move ahead. There's some better things coming. We give you the honor and the praise and the glory this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.